hello to you all and welcome to the interview here at Carousel du Lourd. There is no such thing as a disabled person, only disabled technologies. While well, the author of this tagline is both the creator and user of Bionic Limbs, a scientist who runs the biomechatronics group at the MIT Media Lab and a fierce advocate of human augmentation. So, how to build a bionic man? Let's turn the question to you here. Great to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. So you're probably one of the best spokesperson uh, for the one living at the bionic age, especially since you had to go through amputation at the age of 17. Now, 37 years ago, would you ever think that one day robotic prosthetic could actually mimic real limbs? It was my dream, it was my fantasy, but uh, I wasn't certain it would actually come true. And after years of study and effort by, by myself and my colleagues, uh, we now have a bionic limb that emulates a lot of, of natural functions. Because if I'm not mistaken, actually biomechatronics tries to merge body and machine using technology which actually behave like muscle, right? That's right. So we, we study how the biological finagle works and, uh, for example, how the muscles are controlled by the brain. And then we, on, on computer chip, we program the computer chip to control the muscle-like motors in the same way that biological muscle is controlled by the spinal cord. So even though it's made of synthetic materials, mm -hmm. the bionic limb moves as if it's made of flesh and bone. And you actually saved the life of dozens of amputees with the biome, the very first uh, robotic prosthetic leg and limbs um, that actually behaves like a real foot and flush to blood type of foot, right? And now you're working on brain control bionic limbs. How does it work right. exactly? Um, we're actually uh, uh, in the surgical process when the limb is amputated. We actually configure the tissues to make them conducive for signaling between the nerve and the external computers and motors. So we create basically biological joints with, within the residuum and put sensors inside the body and collect information. So as the person thinks and moves these biological structures, um, we sense that and that's communicated to the artificial limb. So a person can think, move the artificial limb and also feel the movements of the synthetic limb as if the synthetic limb is part of, of their body. And you actually went into clinical tests um, last fall, if I'm not mistaken, though. That's right. Uh, the surgeries are performed at Brigham Women's Hospital under the direction of Matthew Carty, my, my partner in crime. So to date, we've done almost 20 individuals, and we believe that uh, the clinical trial will expand, and many, many patients throughout the world will receive this novel treatment. So are we toward the end of disability? We're not towards the end, uh, but we're starting to glimpse um, this notion that technology can mitigate and sometimes completely eliminate disability. And I, I believe in this 21st century, um, we will eradicate human limitation and disability. So it's a, it's a wonderful use of science and technology and business to reduce uh, so much pain and suffering. Meaning that you probably also want to expand uh, human capabilities for anyone else. Yeah, I think that the, the exact same science and technology that will lead to the end of disability will also be uh, uh, the foundation for augmenting humans with technology, allowing humans to go beyond their innate phys uh, physiology, um, allowing them to jump higher, run faster, think faster, Um, feel things that they haven't felt. No. So you're probably the very first citizen of a bionic society. What does it mean living at the bionic age? Can you dive us into or drive us into this new era? So we're we're uh, we're used to to not to just completely accepting our bodies uh, from from our genetics and what we were born with. Uh, and what it means to be bionics uh, you can, is that you can sculpt your own physicality, your own cognition, using design and technology. And you need not live with what you were born with. So this expansion of what the body can be is at the heart of the culture around, um, around bionics. Now, you've also been one of the experts uh, to testify in favor of Oscar Pistorius when the Federation was trying to weigh the pros and cons of letting him running with um, valid athletes. Um, what do you think that, of course, and again, uh, synthetic limbs and bionic limbs will be the future of sports? Yeah, just, just like there was the fantastic invention of the bicycle that led to the sport called cycling, 
as we march through this century, there is going to be various forms of augmentation, power running, power climbing, power swimming, that will lead to a whole host of new sports. So it's going to be a, a lot of fun, an absolute lot of fun. But now, some would also argue that there are downsides or potential downsides when it comes to human augmentation um, and probably leading us to the creation of a two-tier type of society. What do you have to answer to this? I, I think it's, it's important that we as citizens uh, demand that we own our own data and that we own our own bodies. Um, and not allow governments and communities to make uh, to take ownership over our bodies and our data. Um, as long as we do that, as long as we strictly adhere to the idea of individual freedom and rights, um, I think we can develop augmentation technology and use it in a in a very productive way to reduce human limitation and suffering, mm -hmm. and also to expand what humans can be. Um, how, how we can be physically and cognitively, what we can feel, what we can experience. That's what Bionics is about. It's this everlasting journey of expression, human expression, and expanding that expression in the world. Now you take a very important type of, of, of subject here and topics here, data. And data are so crucial when it comes to health issues and to e-health, as we call it now. Uh, how to make sure that actually those um, health data still are in our hands? We need to, as citizens, we need to demand that, that uh, there's an explicit um, decision that each individual makes. Uh, to give uh, the permission of entities and governments to use, use data. Um, we often freely give away data. Uh, and I think as, as Bionics advances, as artificial intelligence advances, we need to be more and more careful and seek ownership over, over our data and our bodies. So regulation is good for some reason, but now there is also this um, question about the timing of innovation does not fit the timing of regulation. Yeah, technology is moving so rapidly um, that it's, uh, it's hard for regulators to keep up. So I, I think we should, we should be generating more and more PhDs in the area of law and policy. And I think we should, as a community, we should be thinking very, very deeply about policies around augmentation. On the one hand, we can be, do something so wonderful and beautiful as ending disease and disability. But on the other hand, we need to mitigate um, unintended, nefarious uh, uses of such new technology. Which definitely leads us to the question of ethics when it comes to technology exactly. and biotechnologies. Um, what would be the best ethics to bear in mind when it comes to that very specific field? So I, I think a, a, adhering to the principle of maintaining or even expanding human diversity is important. So for example, if we were to allow uh, future parents to design their future babies, I think that would be devastating to, to human diversity. Because humans often have a very narrow view of what beauty is and what intelligence is. And if we allow individual humans to dictate that in their future offspring, it, it would be a mistake in my view. Um, so th there's a few um, critical uh, decisions that we have to make. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can largely get it right. We're, we're in the net uh, benefit of bionic technology will far exceed uh, the negative consequences of this new technology. And now there's also this very same debate which is eating up when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence. Should we actually choose human over machines? I, th I think it's not machine versus human. I think we're going to more and more as humans blend in with the design world. Um, we're going to put into our machines, our designs, our humanity, what we hold dear, where our machines will become more like us and will become integrated and expanded and augmented uh, through a marriage between the design synthetic world and us, our biology. You, Herr, very first citizen of the Bionic Age. Thank you so much you. for stopping by uh, the interview here on Friends 24. Pleasure. Thank you.
And that's all we have time for. More news to come on France 24.